Hey, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time all around. Welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer on Fiverr.com where I've been selling as a Fiverr Pro verified copywriter for about the past eight years. And in today's Freelance Friday video, I am reviewing the book called Everybody Writes by Anne Hadley, your go-to guide for creating, oh sorry, your go-to. And in today's Freelance Friday video, I am doing part four? I think in my copywriting book review series, I think I'm on to book four now, it's been a minute. Everybody writes your go-to guide to creating ridiculously good content by Anne Hadley. I think that this is just right off the bat one of the most like entry level, you're super not comfortable with distinguishing yourself as a writer kinds of books to get into like the nitty gritty of writing. Or at least that is how the beginning of the book phrases it. Hello, editor Carrie here. Yes, I do sit on the floor half the time in my office, even though my desk is adorably cute. It's not that comfortable. I'm gonna pop in a bunch throughout this video because although I'm happy with most of the things that I recorded, I feel like I didn't cover everything. So just expect some in and out with Carrie of the past and Carrie of today, and we will get some things sorted out. All right, onto the content. So I mostly liked it and I mostly think it's good. It was kind of a book that had a lot of good things going for it, but didn't really pick one of those things to do really well. And I will give her credit. I did think that bits of it were really entertaining. Her voice shines through. I felt like she was just an actual author that like I would like to personally talk to or get to know. Like her, her vibe was there in the book for parts, but this is meant to be like a desk guide. This is supposed to be something you put on your shelf and you can come back to as a reference. So there were parts of the book that were really interesting to read, but those felt fluffy and inconsequential. And then the parts of the book that were more of the desk reference specific stuff was not at all fun to read and lacked that voice that didn't carry the whole way through, which I think should be possible to write a writing book in a way that is entertaining. And the lack of consistency also made it harder to track down what was fluffy fun and what was really important. So the question then is who is the book actually written for? I'm gonna pull out one little sentence from the beginning that kind of got my eyebrow quirked up a little bit. Okay, part one, page one. Also, there's another note coming, but notice how many pages were there before the book even starts, okay? Coming back to that. In other words, this book assumes that you are equipped with some very basic tools a working knowledge of English, that means basic levels of grammar, spelling, usage, and punctuation. And I mean very basic. If you recognize that this is a sentence and not say a rhinoceros, dot, 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 we're good. And you can safely proceed knowing you aren't out of your depth. And I am all about everyone is a writer. Everybody writes, ding, ding, ding. I don't think that this is some magical, you're born with it or you're not kind of skill, but I do think that that was a massive overstatement. I'm sorry, 31 pages of grammar talk is not going to prepare you from I barely know what a sentence is to being a copywriter or content writer hired on as a brand journalist for a company. This book was so, so minimal on the foundational tool stuff and it assumed that you knew so much. It has some cool little facts about grammar and it kind of does some helpful stuff, but like, if you're gonna say that, that's, you need to back it up. If you really mean that it's for people who have a strong command of the language already, then say that, but like that's who the book is really for and the fact that we did that and then said that. So the, this book could have been probably a third shorter if it didn't have all of these new chapters 24 seven. This chapter, is a pay, I just randomly flipped to this, I swear I didn't even plan this. This chapter is one page. This chapter is a page and a paragraph. Oh, this one's pretty big, okay. And then we're back to another page and a page. There was so much white space in the book and it wasn't even that it would have been easier to flip through. I'm not about wasting paper for one, but also it just made the book feel like it was so much more encompassing and like heavy duty than it is. So much of it felt like it should have just been a blog post. I don't know, it just felt like it wasn't worthy of a book. Ugh, that's so mean to say. But do I think that you should read it? Maybe? So part one, writing rules, how to write better and how to hate writing less, I think was the most inspirational part of the book. It had the most personality to it. 
and it felt the most like uh, cheerleadery. Anyone can do this if you practice and you put in the work to do it, which I wholeheartedly agree with. Some of her specific strategies I don't personally, literally personally ascribe to. I honestly don't know if it's ascribed to or prescribed to or subscribed to and it's not in the book and I can't find it online. Oh no. Like I have never been a person who enjoys writing drafts at all. Even today, I've never done it. I don't like drafting. I do think that for most people that is a normal way to write. I think that that's a good suggestion for someone who feels overwhelmed. Oh God, how do I actually put my thoughts into action? That felt like the longest part of the book. It may not have been, but it felt that way. But it really didn't get very far and it didn't really cover anything more than your ninth grade English teacher probably told you about the drafting process. Basic. I mean, useful for most people, but basic. And then stuff like put important information first, cut things out, be concise, use analogies, and write like a real person in a readable way. That's basically the gist of the first part. It's really focused on people who feel completely out of their depth writing and people who need a lot of like inspirational help to figure out how to do this whole like writing thing. It kept saying the whole way through the book, like I'm gonna get to that and then I, feel like I kept reading and thinking like, did you ever get to that? And then we got to part two, which I was most excited about, which is grammar and usage, because I was really excited to see like a desk reference kind of book that puts the mass of the English language, which is just the mess in itself, and seeing how they could instill like the most practical grammar rules in a way that actually like fits with writing well. Not just writing correctly, but like writing well. And I've been thinking about this topic a lot and I've been trying to start summarizing my thoughts to see if I can make a video about this in the way that like I approach grammar as a tool to be better understood, not just technically correct. Real world oriented, like how you put it into action. Cadence or like making sentences function well together in a paragraph. It's something that not everyone understands. It has such a big effect on the way that you are writing reads as a whole. And it's stuff like that, like those real world usable rules that I felt like weren't involved in the grammar chunk and weren't super helpful or at least not comprehensive. I wanna like dive in and I want it to be organized in a way that's easy to reference or easier to reference than just Googling. There was this chunk on learn words you're probably misusing or confusing. Maybe if you are unfamiliar with writing, your spelling slash grammar skills are kind of weak. Maybe you would read this and then lock in the way in the back of your mind. Oh yeah, I do spell that word wrong. And then at least you might like Google it or maybe you would like come back to this book. I guess I just don't un totally understand the point of this because it's just something you would Google. But again, maybe it's because you just don't know that you need to Google it. I don't know. Horde versus horde, accept versus accept, discrete versus discrete. It's important, but this list was not exhaustive. And there were so many other words that as soon as we went through this, I'm like, oh, well then that word should have been included in the list. Here's my instant super fast pro tip. If you are unsure if you are spelling the word right or if you are confusing it with the other version of the word, even faster than Googling it is if you're typing in a word processor, click on the cinnamon, bleh, synonyms tool, very quickly fix for you if you are using the wrong version of the word you intend to be using. I don't know, I guess that's the whole book. That's my whole takeaway is that some things felt too specific without being comprehensive. Like the whole book tried to be comprehensive so that the topics that were covered weren't comprehensive. The whole big chunk in this book about brand journalism felt like a complete departure from you wanna write, you wanna write good, but you don't know how, we got you. Like that's like the tone of the beginning of the book. And then we get into a very, very small amount of grammar stuff and it kind of feels like you're leaving me hanging, but okay, I'll stick with it. And then you get to the point about publishing and brand journalism and being kind of like from a journalism perspective in terms of like how you write for a brand. Either it's assuming that you <laughs> are a journalist who doesn't know how to write or somehow you've been hired by a company to be their brand journalist and you don't know how to write or... And then last example, in the chapter called 13 Things Marketers Write. Why would you choose to include an in-depth chapter on LinkedIn, but not captions for Instagram? Which of those two things is like the most used 
And it didn't mention like product descriptions at all, which I know I'm completely biased to because that's a big part of the market Ting copywriting that I offer. But that's also something that if you're gonna go into writing for a landing page and an about page, and, 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 just felt like weird choices of like what got included and what didn't and what was so specific and like what was just missing entirely. But nah, it's not a strong recommendation for me, guys. I'm gonna keep looking. I have two more books on my shelf. Um, that I'm really excited to read next and review. Everybody writes gets a good try from me. All right, thanks so much for watching. This is the end of the video. I'm stopping it right here. Please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel for uh, videos every freelance Friday and every One Take Tuesday. If you're still watching this, you right now are my actual hero. Thank you so much for sticking with me. All right, let's get back to work.